All right. So I think that I have the ability to get one full withered set. Might be time for me to try being a Thorthorer. Well, that's very exciting. According to my notes here, according to my notes here, it's a 71, 91 eater for one staff, a cape, and a costume. And then I'll need 50 thick linen for my robes. That's right, you're a wither, Thomas. All right. I call myself TV Honest because that's my exact initials and also kind of like fits my personality to some degree. It's getting harder as like, as life goes on, but like I used to try to like really be as like forward as possible and like as honest and like forthcoming as possible. I think increasingly you start to like kind of like hold your tongue a little bit because like people get hurt if you say the wrong things and you want people to like entrust themselves and like trust you to some degree. So to some degree I try to or at least think I try to like call it as it is a lot, but you get compromised over time. Like you don't want necessarily contact and climax. So here is my here is my eater refining pyramid. It's looking pretty good. I'd like to make this probably a hexagonal gate if I can. Um, I need to put one more piece of marble there. And then the other problem is that these two pieces up here. Oh, I made it up. I almost made it up. Those two pieces are falling apart when I put the two quarter spires on it. So these two aren't as well supported. For some reason, this side is more supported than this side. Which means that the rocks... It's something to do with the rocks on the bottom. Maybe because of this. So maybe if I drop this... Ow. Oh, this is going to hit me? Oh, I didn't know that. Ooh, that was spooky. Okay, so maybe if I drop this. Oh, it's because the marble's on the bottom. Right, okay, so I have to make these two pieces marble along here. The marble floors should make it so I can build the full tower. So let me see, let me see if I have the, the marble on me now to toy with that. I'm not sure I do. Got tons of eater here, 55, plus whatever's in there. So I guess I don't have any more on me, right? Got it. Ooh, I got really, really took a couple of shots there, didn't I? Okay, so 55 plus whatever's in there. So is this thing still going? Let's get another stack going on here. There we go, that, and give me some sappies. Know, how's your weekend been? What are you up to? I want to get assassinated by a piece of by a piece of eater here. I better, I better eat something before I go in there. I think. Let's have a let's have a mage cap. Hmm, delicious. <clears throat> that nap really changed my whole life there. I think I think I should be fine. Pew, pew, pew. Okay, how many more is here? So what are we at now? Got another five. I got a while to go still. Yeah, I mean, like, you don't want to just say, yeah, I guess so, or yeah, sure, whenever you disagree with things, but you also don't want to, like, be the person people don't want to confide in because you're going to say something that feels bad. It's hard. I don't know. I find, I'm finding it harder. I used to be honest more, I think, I think I used to be better at it than I am now, to be honest. Um, but yeah, it's my initials, so that's kind of part of it. Okay, so... My job now is I gotta go get some flax, work on the linen. My pets are generally in pretty good shape here. I think I'm breathing properly. I think I'm healthy. I'm not quite sure though. I gotta get my linen going. I think my food's in pretty good shape, generally speaking. Then I definitely don't have enough eater yet, but it's working on it. Yeah. I mean, you're like me. It's like a nice, it's like a nice boost once in a while. But like, I'm not gonna make a habit of it, you know? It's really, really nice to see my friends like once every 
month or two. You get too much in a rut if you don't see people often enough. But like, I like to be home, you know? My, my like routine is treating me pretty well lately, I think. But it's summertime, you know? It's a, really, it's a great feeling to be, it's a great feeling to show up at a party that you weren't expected at and have like the friend of yours who's hosting be very like, be like overjoyed to see you. Cause he didn't know you were like in town. That's a great feeling. I had a friend of mine who had like a sickness scare early on this year, who's better now. And uh, he's better, but he's, it's like aged him a little bit for sure. But he's in good hands. Got a great family. It's nice to get back. Like it's 2023 now. It's nice to get back to some of like the routines. Like every used to, it used to be every single year in Canada Day, we would have a barbecue at this guy's parents' house. But the last three years, that's been very difficult. Apparently, like the trucker convoy last year was the reason they didn't. I don't know. I wasn't around. Um, I'm not sure about that reasoning. 56 flax, not bad. <clears throat> and then obviously the previous two years was like COVID stuff and like pretty awkward and pretty difficult to get together. It's pretty nice to get back to some of those traditions. It's really nice, honestly. Did you host the party? I had a couple of burgers. It's pretty good. Did I still have the linen wheel up? I think I see it in the corner there. Yeah, okay, good. Stock that bad boy up. It's weird how things like barley flour, you have this huge thing to make windmills to have barley flour. Now that I'm into Mistland's food, like, I get it that it was like the end of uh, the game pre-expansion. But now I got all this stuff and I ain't got much to do with it. It's a little bit weird. Um, yeah, it makes sense. Did you bring anything? Did you bring some snackies? Okay, I still have the Modra buffs, so I gotta remember to take that off before I do anything too adventurous. Okay, so, down here, check out my puffies. How my puffies doing? Looks like I got another fresh round of puffies here. Look at this, oh. These used to be so short. The puffies I had after the first run of the game, I was really short of them, but now I'm just absolutely swimming in puffos. Look at this. Oh my god, I'm rich. I think the reason they're all developed is that the last time I played this game, so this would be Friday, two days ago, I think I spent a lot of time sailing. Like, I think it must have been a couple of days sailing. Eight puffies. Run it up the middle. They just, like, grow to be so big once you get them. So it looks like you have such a plethora of puffies once you get into it. It's like a cereal. Jotun Puffs. Got a big, like, smiling... Got a big smiling giant on the cover. <laughs> Kettle corn and cheese platter? That's a great choice. Yeah, yeah. Cocoa Puffs. Do you think they were like an overrated cereal? I don't ever remember that being like one of the ones that was like a must have for me. I love corn pops. Those were so good. I do think that like the Cheerio 
the Cheerio family is still like I think the greatest. Like I would pick apple cinnamon and honey and Cheerios as like consistently like the best flavored ones, and they're like not the worst for you either. They were always so good. I found some like pretty wild combos out there too. Like um, I mean apple cinnamon Cheerios are underrated for sure. And then I need another chest for all this stuff. Um. Oh, I got a lot of these things. Well, okay, so some of the stuff I might have to start cutting out. Too many, blue too many blueberries. Cocoa puffs. You like those in Zen? I like. If I had like a junk cereal, I would like Reese's Puffs or Cook Count Chocula. Like on the weekend, I would dummy one of those, like in junior high. Um, apple cinnamon Cheerios. I also found like some crazy combinations. Like when I was like first living alone, like you still like you have more time to experiment, but you're like not a good cook yet. So the two, like, super deep arcane techs that I figured out were uh, a big, like, quarter cup of smooth peanut butter in Honey Nut Cheerios with milk. That was insane. And this one I wouldn't do now because I don't like soy milk, but vanilla soy milk with honeycombs was also crazy. It was so good. Those were, like, the two arcane fucking super secret spells that I figured out that were both, like actually super good the peanut butter the smooth peanut butter texture in with the honey nut cheerios and the milk there's something about it it's crazy yeah, i don't know i don't know how i thought them up or it was maybe it wasn't maybe it was vanilla yogurt with honeycombs or vanilla yogurt with harvest crunch or vanilla soy milk was it vanilla soy milk i think it was one of the two maybe vanilla yogurt Anyway, it was crazy, but, but the peanut, the smooth peanut butter one, unbelievable. Couldn't recommend enough. Okay, so what's my plan in this game? Currently, I am continuing to collect Eater, which is just takes a pretty long time to do full stacks of it. So I'm gonna keep collecting metals, smelting stuff, and you can never have enough black marble. I'm gonna go back onto the Mistlands. And let's keep going. Yeah, those are the two. What's some other cereals I really liked? Corn Pops ate a lot in high school. I wish I'd eaten like actual like protein and fruit in high school. I think I would have a better skin. I didn't have like the best complexion at that period. Like people, it's I'm one of those people who like, my friends don't remember me having bad skin, but I was obsessed with my skin. Cause it was like, kind of like along the jaws and everything. And like, I always felt like I had a lot. And I always felt like people treated me differently when my skin was worse. But like so much that I've realized is like I ate out a takeo too often and like too much sugar and like just didn't keep my skin clean enough. If I'd eaten a little better, those things would have gone a little better. It's one of those things where other people didn't associate me with being one of the guys with bad skin, but to me I had it. And to me, like girls treated me differently when my skin was worse. It's like one of those things that you think about that no one else thinks about, you know? My friends who brought take home lunches who brought lunches from home more consistently had better skin I find you gotta like really watch like your oils and sugars when you're a teenager and just like wipe your face off during the day etc not use like too much soap all those things that like strip your skin that's it is hard that's a hard period you're like under siege did you feel I was able to take care of myself better when I first started living my own no. I first time I lived my own was third year university and I like went way down the rabbit hole. I like, stayed home all the time, I barely went to school. I was like watching TV and like doing all these things for like hours that I never did before, and it was like too much novelty and too much freedom at once. So I had a really fun year, and it was, in a lot of ways it was like really cool, but it was ultimately kinda of, like bad for me to some degree, I think. Like too far down the rabbit hole. But I mean you you like you learn how to cook and you learn how to like take care of those things by yourself when you live alone. I think. This is a huge skull. This head, this skull had an enormous thing of soft tissue in it that I got yesterday. Like the soft tissue went all the way down to here and I cut out the bottom. I was worried I wouldn't be able to get out. I cut out the bottom and then the whole thing collapsed into me. It was like 70 or 80. Oh. Should we go with the sap? I guess I'll do a full, I guess I'll do like a full pickaxe of black marble cause I'm here. So there's a lot of really great things about living alone. I think everyone should do it. Um, 
I think it's strange, and this is something that a lot happens to a lot of people. I think a lot of people live with their family, and then they live in residence, and then they live with like their friends for a year or two, or move back home after college, and then they move in with their girlfriend and never in their life try living by themselves. And some people are like, no, I wouldn't want to do it because I would be lonely. But like, I think sort of like self company is like a skill, you know what I mean? Like I think it's a characteristic that you should learn. I think everyone should give it a shot. Yeah, so you're kind of in that boat, but it sounds like you you were in that boat because of a uh, feeling of obligation. That's a little different. How quickly did you move in with your boyfriend? Look at this. I can't even hit him. This game can be really annoying sometimes. Oh. He's gonna kill me now, I think. Nope, never mind. He's stunned. Alright, see. A lot of those times he could hit me there, but I couldn't hit him. My favorite part of this game. Like, I think, I don't know, I'm probably one of the people who spent too much time... I mean, I've had like a rough split of living with roommates and uh, living solo, but... I don't know. I'm a little... A little bit to a fault, I need things in my own way. So... Um, I generally feel like my life is better, and like I have better times when I'm not like distracted by having people around. Like that feeling of like, you're chilling, and then you hear someone come home. It's like, and you're like, you just feel worse, like you're kind of like, your stomach drops a little bit, because you know someone's home. I don't know. It's something about that. Like, it's, if that's the if that's the instinct you have, you probably should live solo. Are your parents sick or something? Yeah. I mean, there's no arguing with the financial benefits of living with a partner. Living with a partner means that you can spend half the money to have that much better of an apartment. Like, let's say you live, in my experience, in Toronto. So let's say that's a city I know pretty well. The way it is these days, like, you essentially need to have an act, without getting lucky, to essentially have like an actually good apartment, you have to spend like at least 2000 and so, if you're with if, if you're living with a partner, you're spending one thousand. But if you're living with a roommate, you're both spending say fourteen hundred to have a good two bed. Yeah, fair. They're just old. Um, or you're spending I don't know. It's just like the 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 economics of living with a partner because you're just like you're sharing the bedroom. So you can even maybe have like a second bedroom or like a den as an office. It's just too good to turn down. And I think like. I don't know. I think even for dudes, like, I think you're a little, you grow up a little faster if you live with a girlfriend earlier. Kind of become a more conscientious, kind of like, you kind of become a better person. Plus your relationship, like, amps up. It's kind of like do or, like, I don't know. Sometimes it kind of feels like do or die to, like, when you first live with them. Like, you, have, you guys better adjust to what the things are going to be like. The big thing with relationships is that, like, there's two, I don't know, this is an overgeneralization, but there's kind of two different kinds of people. There's people who, like, more value being in a relationship, so they're willing to, like, let go of some things that they don't like. And there's people who more value having things go their way, so they're going to give up on a relationship if it's not going the way they like. And those people are probably going to generally maybe think about things later, but, like, in the moment, be really, really stubborn. So it's a hard thing to figure out. Some people are like, whatever, I want to be with someone, so I'm going to let some stuff slide, and they're pretty tolerant. And some people are not tolerant, and they, like, fight every battle. More financial freedom, but struggle to look after me plus one. Well, ideally, you're not looking after the other person. They're looking after themselves. And, like, things are better for both of you. Ideally. Ideally. 
ideally, is not always reality. And then there's like other details too. There's other things about relationships that like, that kind of fuck me up a lot too. Like, I crave, I kind of like more crave being with someone who I feel is similar to me. But a lot of people say that like being someone who kind of like is a yin to your yang is like a better long-term plan or like it works better long-term, you know what I mean? The person I'm with now is like, in most ways could not be more different to me in terms of like priorities and things they care about and like what things they value like they could not be less like me and so sometimes that feels like i don't know but sometimes that's useful like one person cooks one person one person likes cooking one person likes cleaning one person likes having a good time, the other person likes to have life kind of like tidy and taken care of. Those are things that are like a good yin and yang. If this person cares about making sure everything's in good order, this person more cares about like life being good. This person's serious, this person's jokey, you kind of meet in the middle. Those things are arguments for it being a good relationship or a good couple. But then you're like, well, do I feel like this is good or am I just thinking that this is good? Those are legitimate things to think about. I don't know the answers to those questions like do i intellectually think this is a good relationship or do i feel like it is those are questions i have i like to some degree i, I think but I, I don't know if it's a good instinct but to some degree i kind of want someone who's like female me someone who's like a little bit depressed and like pretty funny and cares about the little things and like has a lot of potential but doesn't really like reach up to it you know what i mean that's kind of like I want that version. But is that necessarily healthy? I'm not really sure. Okay, I picked up another fat stack of 100 black marble. It's actually pretty easy to farm. Let's hope I have enough, let's hope I have enough stamina to make it to shore here. But he has less social anxiety and better focus. I have less social anxiety. I don't know. It's tough to say. She has better focus than I do. I mean, it sounds like you guys like... It sounds like a pretty good pairing. My cousin, my first cousin, so my dad's sister's daughter. I'm pretty close with in the last few years. And she says her and her husband are like... Pretty similar. Like they're both kind of chunky and they're like kind of being sort of stoned all the time and uh she says they're basically like a couple of house cats when they're at home they're just on the couch eating and like being comfy together so they like that some people would say that's like a way of like promoting your worst habits but i don't know if it works for them it works for them who cares you just have to want it that's all it is right you just have to want what you have. But some people will never be happy, and some people will be like more or less fine regardless. To me, it felt weird uh, to watch like basically all of my friends from high school who I've known since I was like 14. Basically all of them, it felt like, with very few exceptions, essentially married settled down with and married their last college girlfriend. I was like, really, is this the way that it goes? But I guess it does. Like, if people if people are prioritizing like settling down pretty early, like then you have three or four years of college time to find the right kind of person and then be like, yeah, okay, we're the same age, same general fucking demographic. That's good enough. To me, that felt weird. Because I would see them compromise a lot in the next few years to make it work. And that felt like I was suspicious about that. But, I don't know. For most people, marriage and kids and a career are basically the three things you need to get tackled. And then at that point, you're done, right? Those are the three things you just need to have basically covered. And if you do those, then... Uh, la, la, la. You can't tell me nothing, right? So at that point... 
you're unimpeachable. Your, your behavior is unimpeachable at that point. So. This is a new one too. I feel like they've added more. That's a new one. I've never seen that one either. Cool. Okay, let's take this marble and finish our pyramid. Stock up back, stock back up the eater. And then if I have, I'm not going to make the, I'm not going to make the robes without having the, um, without having this, the ability to make a staff. I need to make another, how much you need for the big chests? Two tar, six black metal, ten wood. Six black metal, that's no, no joke. And wood, that's kind of more like a joke. Okay, so put away the marble for a second so I can breathe. There we go, that's heavy. There's a little linen, good. Okay, so, um, what am I doing? Oh yeah, I'm building a chest. Gotta get over here. Yeah, I agree. That's how I feel too. But it just depends on how much you like prioritize a relationship, like how important being settled down is. For some people, it's like a sense of failure. I mean, especially women, especially as they hit their like mid twenties. It's like for some people, like starting to be considered like a sign of failure if you're not like settled down with someone by that point. Just the reality of it. I'm not saying it's great, but I think it's kind of undeniable. Why are these in here? Um, now I get my marble back, put away this stuff, put the carapace in there. Okay, um, now I get that, where'd I put it? Here? Yeah. Okay, it's finished building my Pyramido. Okay, so, building. Black marble floor. Sometimes the feeling of failure can stem from expectations. 100% the feeling of failure can stem from expectations from society, for family. Like, very few people have the strength to, like, be like, this is 100% what I want, I don't care what anyone thinks. Like, it's 100% like the way that other people kind of poke at you a little bit if they think you're not doing putting things together. Pyramid is looking pretty good. Um, I will, when I do my, like, full gloss over of the whole thing, I will probably move it. Eventually. I will probably move it. I have, to I have to rethink this entire area because this all is there's so many more workbenches and everything so I will need to probably spread out my work stuff and use this second ter this first terrace and second terrace actually the second terrace is ultimately fine with the portals but this second terrace I will have to utilize a little better for workbench type stuff and like various things and then make these actual internal indoor outdoor structures with the cooking and everything this is the these are basically just like fucking lean twos and shanties but yeah the pyramid looked pretty good it's actually pretty simple in the end the other thing i'll do is i want to make this a hexagonal door if i can figure out the problem is with making a hex if you make it the problem with making it a hexagonal door is um it's not going to be slanted right now this obviously isn't slanted it looks a little bit fucking anky but Figuring out, maybe the metal wall. Figuring out, maybe if I do a metal wall, I might still be able to reach through it. And we'll figure it out. Anyway, so first off, um, okay. Floor, drop these floors down. A little bit hard to see here. Put those down, our black marble floor. These angles are super awkward. I think I'm gonna do it from inside. Get shot. Pew, pew, pew. 
Okay, so, um, hard. At least hope, hope it doesn't fall apart. Oh, I've been burned. Okay, so take these all out. And marble. Marble, okay. And it's a slotted end, good. And these can be stone again. The pyramid is just like geometry. You basically just figure out which pieces it needs. Okay, so now, hypothetically speaking, these should now work. Whew. Right? Didn't fall apart? Nice. So the black marble is better support than stone floors, duly noted. Why is that one working? They have to be above it? Why are you not working? Why are you doing this? So... It doesn't want to do it unless I gotta get an angle to be on top of it. But I don't think it's I don't think it's possible to get on top of this. It'll just slide. Yeah. So. Oh, I gotta do this piece too. Oop. Oh no! I'm gonna get killed. Get me out of here. Ugh. I'm gonna get assassinated in here. Can I really not get through here? What a disaster. I can hop on this little pipe, right? Jesus. Um, okay, so this one here is a plinth. So why is that not working? Because the gate's in the way? Okay, remove the gate. Why is this not working? There we go. And then... Put the gate back up. Where'd that iron go? These are so complicated. Give me that, please. Give me that. Oh, and I can't jump. Everything's so difficult. Uh, now the gate goes this way. Okay, now I can I jump again? Thank you. Now can I jump again? Thank you. Okay, so that's getting a little better. I feel like the inside with the iron beans may put more stability. I really like the way that, I like when I see videos of people making places that use the the metal walls or the cage walls to be like the basis of their, of the thing they build. I think it makes it easier to place on. I really like that. I think it looks really cool. Okay, the problem here is I can't get the right angle because they don't want to let me put, they need this to be on top. Look, that's really weird. They need me to put this on top of that plinth, which means I have to build something to get a higher angle. No. But this should be... Okay, so I need a piece of wood to make a little floor. Sheesh. It never ends. Oh my god. What's too much? The black marble. Okay, so leave some of the black marble back here. The never, literally a never ending struggle. Build the step stairs on top of the roof. Yeah, that's probably. Do I have enough wood to do that? Okay, so what I'll do is. Oh, hold on. Hold on. We're running into stamina. As per usual. Pew, 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 pew. Okay, so. Um... I mean, that should do. Marble quarter spiral. There you go. So will that break off? Three, two, one. Great. Great. Okay. So pyramid complete. Is that angle right? Yeah. It's a little weird from like this angle. No, we're good. All right. So pyramid done. It's pretty actually. It's actually pretty fast to make. You do corner plinth, corner plinth. Corner plinth, corner plinth on the way up and have enough normal plinths to build it up. So it's actually not that hard to do. One of my bushes took a, one of my, one of my raspberry bushes took a stray shot when this was uh, down here. 
pew, pew, pew. Shot through here. Assassinated one of my bush. So upsetting. So how's your recharge day going? What are you up to? I feel like one of my... No, I've always had three. Okay, we're good. There we go. Get those in there. Slurp up all this sweet, sweet honeycomb. Come on. Yeah. Alright. Slurp up the rest of this eater. Is this stuff heavy? Whew. Getting assassinated. Can't pick the linen right now. Okay. Um, I'm going to start putting it here. I'm going to put all of them here to reduce confusion. Boom, how much are we at? We're at 74. So we want to be at 91 and then make a full set. Slurp up this linen. Come on. Oh, that's why. Okay. Yeah, I'm probably too lazy to. I'll probably have to eventually remember what the console commands are to make another one. But uh, today is not that day. Okay, black marble, I can just chill on. I need to start exploring to get more cores, but I will wait until such a point as I have more, as I have the one full set of the sorcery gear so I can start playing with it. Another thing I need to do is to pick up all these carrots, keep my carrot supplies healthy. You mean like cord management? Is that what you're doing? So, let me see if I have seed carrots. Or see if I have on see, so see if I have actual seeds. What do we have here? 21, 9, 28, that's good. It's nice to have like a I feel like that Norwegian seed bank. You always gotta have everything. You always have a, always have to have a backup for later. Just in case the world goes to shit. Yesterday I watched a Lex Friedman podcast with Sam Altman, the CEO of OpenAI. I guess it was pretty interesting. I thought I would learn a little bit more than I did. But he seems like a really impactful dude. He's like sold he's like sold or been part of like three enormous companies, and he's like 36 already already. It's pretty insane. I only got 15 carrots out of all that. Yeesh. I right, see so your cord management's ahead of things. I like that. Mine's not great. But it's not terrible either. There's a little bit together. Sometimes I notice with my old setup that if the cords that went from my speaker to the PC, the one that actually carried the sound, if that had too many cords near it, you'd hear an you'd hear like an ambient buzz all the time. So that was the one that I tried to avoid. That bzzz, when you turned your speaker all the way down. Ooh, that's a bummer. Okay, so stack up the stack up the machine firer one more time. Wrap it with what? Oh, this is already it's actually going pretty quick. I don't I almost kinda like I'm wondering whether this is one of those things like the animal taming where it goes faster if you're around. That can't be right. Oh my god, please. Come on, give me the angle. What is this? What is it? It was just working. What is this not just working? I guess I'm too far away. Huh? I don't know what a cord sleeve is. Okay, I'll check it out.
So right now I'm good on the buzzing, but it, it has it has certainly buzzed before. And it may buzz again. Okay, so put the eater up here. What do we at now? We're at 80, almost there. So I will now, I feel like the day is like half over. Where do I get this extra stone from? Okay, so next, do a little survey of my onions. Oh, these are turnips. I don't care about turnips. Oh, I'm doing that anyway. I replant those. I'm gonna replant those turnips in the ground. How many see how many onions I have? Three? And then six onion seeds. So I'll plant six onions. One, two, three, six. And then two three seed onions. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to be better about like using plastics. Like I bought a bunch of glass Tupperware. I try to use that as much as I can. A lot of things are in plastic, Ziploc bags and everything are just so convenient. It's hard to resist that kind of stuff. I'm trying to be I'm trying to be a bit better about that kind of stuff. Okay, I'm gonna go pick up my sap. I should probably put some random food in my belly. I'm gonna go pick up see how my sap extractor's going, and then tomorrow the eater should be done. To such a level where I can go exploring. I'm going to this one? No. My sap extractor is in this one. And I was wiped earlier. I played two games of League and the first game really stressed me out. And it was like after my coffee and I was like, I felt like I was like, my heart was beating and I was like quite tired. And then after that, I was like really quite weary. Very weird. Okay, where's my sap extractor? I love these guys are here chilling with me. I just want to say that for the hundred millionth time. Okay, my extractor route is southwest. I love having these Deverger near my base. It's the best feel. It's, I'm so lucky with that. The same way I got really, really lucky with having my Meadows portal that's near the Merchant also have a tiny patch of planes on it to make uh, planes farming easy. Those are really, really lucky moments. Okay. Um, so there's nothing else here I can really adventure. I can maybe go grab a thing of... Maybe grab some more marble when I'm here. You're a big boy. To be honest, I don't really need that in my life right now. And get marble from somewhere else. Without dealing with fucko. What's in here? Five iron? Yeah, I made a big courier's trip. Last time I played, I guess Friday night, and flew all, sailed all the way here, and took four trips from my base to my ship and back to get um, to get all of the copper and iron straps that I had picked up from all those iron, from all those pieces of armor. So I got a like, I think it's like at least fifty to sixty iron and uh, copper scraps. So that should really help. I still have to fetch some tin because I do think I need bronze for some of those equipment. Obviously, I will eventually want to have um, full stacks of as many of the weapons as possible if I want to consider consider the game completed. But in terms of an actually like uh, upgraded set, I really only care about the ones that I'm going to use, and I do expect to kind of like use the mage stuff unless I end up really disliking it. I don't know. I think I'm sort of like a magic user at heart in games like this, or any sort of like fantasy games. I'd always rather be the guy with the really cool powerful spells and let someone else do the button mashing, then I would, it's always the easiest, most straightforward way in an RPG to be the bruiser. It's just like, I'm not sure it really does it for me. It's kind of cool to be the quarterback. 
and let and let someone else do like all that stuff, and then you come in with a really cool spell once in a while. Like I mentioned this before, but like in Divinity Original Sin 2, my favorite my favorite playstyle was uh, the Red Prince as like the heavy physical guy with then some fire and earth magic, I think, because it fit his playstyle, because he had like flame breath, etc. And then I my primary character was Sibyl doing like all sorts of like roguey subtlety stuff, and then two mages splitting all the rest of the elements. Yeah. I mean, it was annoying to do it, but you got to get it done. I was listening to podcasts, and the biggest thing that I realized is... So here, here was my boat before. So I was running all the way across here, which is annoying. But eventually, once I realized I could go through the plains into the mountain, and I found that I could get to my portal easily from the mountain, much easier than finding a pass through the Mistlands. It's almost like I was, like, smarter because I wasn't streaming. I could, like, think a little more clearly. The Mistlands have been pretty... T the Mistlands have been tilting me a lot lately. So I kind of felt like when I was a little more quiet and like just had some sort of like music going on or something like that. Actually, I was watching like the Resident Arc guys do like their Final Fantasy live stream of every single Final Fantasy game. And once I was doing that, I was like, all right, I'm chilling. I felt like I was a little smarter. Sometimes in like desperate measures, I'm a little bit better with an audience like on stream. I'm like a little bit better at like things where I have to do something well or I die. But in terms of like grindy, chory stuff, I don't know. The mislines have been a little tilting. Also, like, I really gotta wrap this game up. Like, I can't play this forever. I gotta play Baldur's Gate 1 and 2 by the beginning of August. So I gotta like really work at it this week. No league streams, no excuses. Hope I don't get sick. Oh my god, be horrible. So the best way for me to get all this stuff is to get on top of this. It is so nice out right now. Yesterday was like the, some of the craziest thunder and rain I've ever seen. Like most people were like out at the beaches and everything because it was Canada today. And people were out like kind of like partying and stuff. And then as I was driving to my friend's house at like four-ish. Unbelievable. It was like torrential rain. Like lightning in the skies. Like like I, could, I had to open my windows. My car was steaming up. I had to like open my windows just to like see where to park on the curb. It was crazy. You can feel it all day, like that idea of humidity. It always feels like that. Like the rain like breaks the humidity, like the humidity gets oppressive and hot. And then it just breaks. It's like this catharsis. Do you know what a funny Me Too moment is? I, th I thought of that because I remember Kevin Spacey was on uh, Saturday, Saturday Night Live one time and he was making fun of William Hurt, the 80s actor. And he's talking about like, I was doing this and that and then I experienced a catharsis. Ooh, that was sick. Nice. How's my weight at? Okay, that was good. That was like at least... That was a ton of marble that just fell down. Amazing. Get the rest. Scoop it up. Um, it kind of made me think about it. Like, there are some people who are like generally beloved who instantly the switch turned to this guy's a piece of shit forever. Kevin Spacey was like one of them. Everyone liked Kevin Spacey. Suddenly, boom. Like, pervert forever. Louis C.K. was kind of like that too. Louis C.K., so it's, I thought it was very ironic. I'm like a pretty big fan of his, so like I can't say that I'm not a little bit biased. But the thing was ironic about what happened to Louis C.K. is like, he was like a liberal icon to some degree into being like hated by that same group. It's really interesting how things turn. The argument is like, well, they didn't know that he was the person he was. Can't argue with that. Who's CK had material being like, I don't care, like, why do you care what someone does in their house? Like, who they like, who they have sex with, etc. Like, it doesn't matter, just live your life. He had a lot of views like that, and like, in his comedy. 
but it doesn't matter in the end. Once those New York Times articles start, you're fucked. But he was like everyone's favorite comedian, like literally. Maybe it was a bad time for comedy or something, but he was like literally everybody's favorite comedian. And then boom, like, I had a conversation with a friend of mine like a week or two later. He's like, no, he's a piece of shit. Instantly, like that. I was like, whoa. It's crazy. I feel like comedy is in a weird place right now. Like comedy is like pretty underground right now. There's not a lot of like big, yeah, everybody has Netflix specials all the time. But like, are there like big comedians right now? It feels like no. Like Dave Chappelle is so controversial. I really like Ali Wong, but like, I'm not sure how many people watch her specials. But apparently people don't even like her last one. There's like, I feel like YouTube shorts, I see people doing like crowd work and like small clubs all the time, but like, I'm not sure who the big comedians are anymore. There's like a whole podcast circuit, but like, it feels like kind of like those are bros. Like the podcast, the whole circuit seems to be like kind of just bro-y to some degree. I'm not sure. I actually don't even know anymore. But also like some people would say that like, it's a hard time to be a stand-up comedian. They'll say that like people are too sensitive or like college crowds or like too PC or something. I don't know. I'm not actually sure. But like you're either huge like a Kevin Hart and you do like stadium shows or I think you're kind of independent. I'm not sure. It does seem like everyone gets net. It's a little easy for people to get Netflix specials. That's one of the coolest things about Netflix as a company, I think. I think Netflix made a lot of bad ideas in terms of like how many things they funded and produced and how it's like kind of been part of like why movies have been so diluted now. Like I think we live in one of the weirdest entertainment periods in history. Like huge name actors do trash streaming movies that nobody watches all the time. They'll be like, oh, this is Anna Armas and like Ben Affleck in it. Or this is like fucking Chris Hemsworth. No one watches it. No one gives a shit. They watch it. It's on TV for like, f it's on, it's, it streams for like a week. I know it's more than that, but like, it feels like it's like, it's the, the market is so weird right now. And it's like outside of literally fucking Tom Cruise, it is totally diluted what it means to be a movie star. If you have things that basically go straight to streaming, it like disqualifies you. Like, it's like the weirdest movie time ever. This summer especially? Yeah. I... Yeah, that person sounds like they're kind of TV obsessed, no? Like, worrying about a bunch of things that don't matter. Like, you should consider it a point of pride to not know about reality TV show celebs. That should be a point of pride, that you're like... Spending time on more valuable things. We all spend time fucking, I don't know, jacking off. I don't mean literally, I mean like just doing things that don't matter. Um, but they, I think they wanted you to validate that they were obsessed with it and it should be something to talk about, but they were just sharing with the wrong person, I think. But this summer seems like a horrible summer for movies. There's Barbie, Oppenheimer, Mission Impossible. We're like in the post-Marvel world. Like, no one gives a shit about Marvel movies anymore, essentially. Essentially, not for sure, but essentially. I've never, I feel like I've never in my life seen a summer with this few impactful movies. The multiverse Spider-Man movie is probably the biggest one or the most liked. Barbie and Oppenheimer will be good, but like, what else is there? It was like six months ago that Avatar came out. And like, a lot of people watched it, but did like, do people care? I thought it was good. The one thing I had a problem with with the Avatar movie was there's so many amazing illustrated animated scenes of um, like natural beauty and these incredible wildlife, but you're just framing it as beautiful, but it's not strictly beautiful because it's animated. Like, wow, look at this made up whale and like this beautiful vista. But like, it's actually nature that's beautiful. So they did an amazing job, they have great artists, but just the only, that's one of the weird, the only weird things of the movie I thought was weird. It was like, look at this vista, this incredible world, but it's still artificial. I thought the coolest part of Avatar, the newest one, was that the last third of the movie was essentially one big action sequence. That was pretty cool. I've got marble in here too, nice. 
That part I thought was cool. I also thought it's really funny to have like, see, I, I got 38 iron, another 30 copper. Actually more, 57 copper, nice. Another part of the Avatar movie I found very funny was um, 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 how the girl who was a water, what are they called? I don't know, like a water person who was like the love interest of like the middle teenage boy. It's really funny to have like a person who's got like alien features and they like show the camera like it's like Cameron Diaz in Ace Ventura Pet Detective or like there's something about Mary or something. Like when they show the camera being like, ooh, damn, she's sexy. I'm like, is she sexy or is it weird to find this person sexy because she's blue and like a teenager? I thought that was really funny as well. Yeah. I mean, I agree with what you're saying. It's like something that's kind of bothered me about movies like the past little while is like you're supposed to, you're sh you're shown something i love fantasy i love science fiction i love all this stuff but it's it's just weird to me a little bit to be shown something that you're supposed to view as incredibly beautiful but it's made by like fucking dudes on computers like it's made by people typing it's not the same as like having like an actual cinematographer and like like a director finding some beautiful part of nature you're creating it there's like old school movies where like the magic hour of like the perfect sunlight hitting the scene to give that warm golden light and it's like a true skill to make something beautiful but it's not the same if you're animating it because you have infinite time to be like no i don't think it's the right shade of fucking mauve for the sunset do it again movies now are like 400 people in the credits for the animation section i don't know it's a weird period it's a weird period because like there are like 60, 90, 110. I got enough. Nice. Um, movies are weird right now because there's like, how many actual like sick directors are there anymore? Like, and how many of them are new? Like, I don't know. It feels like we have Christopher Nolan, Quentin Tarantino, Paul Thomas Anderson. Other people would say like the Coens or Wes Anderson or whoever else. But like those three dudes, I feel like the only people who make actual like film movies anymore that are good. And Christopher Nolan makes huge bank and everyone likes his movies, but his last couple are pretty weird. Quentin Tarantino's almost done and he's a controversial figure. And Paul Thomas Anderson, most people don't even give a shit about. But he's a beast. He's been a beast for like 25 years. He's a monster. He's a, he's a fucking monster. He's like incomparably talented. But like no one makes IMAX shit anymore. No one makes like actual film things that often it's a weird period it's a super weird period i spent a lot of time a couple years ago two years ago because i was in panama like didn't have my computer watched a movie every night and i was watching a lot of old school stuff and like some of the periods that i was liking this sounds super hipster but like a lot of like the european like art movies of like the 60s and 70s like Bernardo Bertolucci, Ingmar Bergman, fucking um, Michelangelo Antonioni. A lot of these guys, those movies are sick because they're like adults. They're like complicated. It's just they really like continue to do it for me because they're like stylish and it feels like real life. Scorsese was a little bit in that realm too. You could tell that Scorsese was affected by those guys. Early movies like Main, mean Streets and Taxi Driver. Those movies are great. Okay, what time? What am I doing here? I'm gonna go exploring. Hold on. No, I'm building my set. I got too many things going on. So. I gotta wait for this full set to go. Well, the style of how you show that. I think directors nowadays lack the drive to make it unique. I think they also have a lot of pressure from like studios and like Netflix, etc. to make things a certain way. Like there's like articles, there's like articles going around last year, early this year, being like, why do all Netflix movies look the same? Why do all movies look the same right now? And it's like, I think Netflix like mandates the cameras you use, and like so it affects like the color scheme, etc. 80s to early 2000s, those are awesome periods. I would do like 70s to 90s, but I, I've t I'm totally on board with what you're saying. Um. I think there's a lot of pressures. 
Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna go do some exploring and let this thing do its thing. Oh, what was I gonna say? Um, I lived okay. So when I first left Toronto in like May 2021 to get away from all this bullshit, um, the house I was staying in had um. Like, probably 250 plus DVDs. And I was like, great. The house didn't have internet. So I ate mushrooms and watched a movie a night, sometimes two movies a night, for like five months and like got myself up to a normal healthy weight and like did all this stuff that was like so different than what I'd normally done. And so the vast majority of the movies were 80s and 90s. Couple 70s, some 2000s, but like, I just like went through from A to Z all the ones that I wanted to see. And it was such a cool vibe. The guy had like a certain kind of taste, a little action y, a little dopey. But overall, like, man, it was so fun. I really enjoyed it. I saw a lot of stuff that's like those movies that like everyone I felt like my age had always seen, but I had never seen. Or like people older than me had always like talked about, like Gen X people had always talked about that I had never seen. So I got to see a lot of those. Like, all these 80s movies, like, Wall Street, and, like, all these, like, Michael Douglas movies, and, like, Patrick Swayze stuff. All these things I'd never seen. That are, like, kind of corny, but, like, they're those things that, like, everyone has seen that I wanted to see. I saw Ghost by Tom Hanks I never saw before. No, sorry. I saw Big by Tom Hanks I never saw before. I saw Ghost with Patrick Swayze. I saw Fatal Attraction. A ton of stuff. And then eventually, by the time I was, like, running out of the stuff in the movie in the pile I liked. I started like finding stuff at the library. Like DVDs at like the library. PEI, where I was where I'm where I was there at the time, is so old school. PEI is like the most old fashioned part of Canada, probably easily. So I was I was I was out there with the fucking old dudes and like my dad. Getting DVDs at the library. It's great. You like me now, bitch. Swords out. I like I like swords and two handed weapons the most in this game. Maces are really powerful, and I kind of had kind of had a deal going with my buddies. Oh shit! I kind of had a deal going with my friend when he played that we use different weapons. Like I would use a sword, my friend would use a mace, and kind of messed me up. Once we got to bone mass, and he was doing like triple the damage to bone mass that I was, because my sword was doing my sword and arrows were doing nothing, and his mace was doing yellow damage. Insane. So was, I realized then that you have to have like a sword and shield and two different weapon choices essentially to succeed. Okay, so we are looking for Crips and Deverger homes. We do need more cores, most importantly. So I gotta keep an eye out. This is a hard level to like, the mist signs make it really hard to spot stuff. Hey bud. Armor. Like it's like, there can be like, there's just totally a chance that I could just miss something because I just never pass by the right 50 meter slot in the woods. Like, are there dudes here? Like, this could be, like, this could have been one of the ones that I go down and there's a crypt down there. It's not. Fort. But like that 80s, I think 70s movies were like one of the decades with like pretty great movies to be sure, to be honest. But like the 80s really does it. The 80s movies really do it for me. Like there's a real confident, there's a real confidence to that decade. Um, in my head, I feel like there's links you can make. One thing I was going to say before I forgot is when you're saying that a lot of directors make things seem the same. I took a lot of film courses in university and for a while I thought it was like the thing I was going to do. So I've studied a lot, I've read a lot about it. It strikes me that there can, there's constantly been a cycle ever since like the 30s of rotations of creatives and executives sharing power and swapping who's dominant. 
30s is like 30s and 40s are considered like the golden era that's a period where like everything was like running like this like everyone was like on salary making a movie constantly the 50s they start to try to make big huge blockbusters all the time because they broke up the monopoly of distributors and producers owning everything so you have to start making big ticket movies to make a ton of money by the 60s, it starts to be like Easy Rider and everything starts to be that like artistic creatives who can make a movie that a ton of people watch that's like a zeitgeist movie start to make a ton of money for how much they cost. And then it starts to be this like danger zone of like people having too much creative power and making really self-indulgent bullshit. Um, and then by the time the 80s comes around again, the 80s was like the peak in some way it's not really true in some ways the 50s was the peak but like the 80s in some ways felt like that peak of like american economic power like big dick cocaine shoulder pad energy and that felt like there's a lot of there's not a whole lot of like artistry and like subtlety in movies in the 80s but they were like boom science fiction here's the future here's technology here's like all this like optimism and confidence then the 90s is a reaction to that the Pulp Fictions, the, like, Clerks, the, like, Kevin Smith movies, like, Irony, like, yay, whatever, dude. And then since then, it's been kind of, like, more and more digitized, and it's harder to kind of say. But I think especially in, like, the Marvel area, era, and kind of to some degree now, executives have way too much power. And so the movies are bland. There's so many remakes. There's so many remasters, like, in video games. Sorry, that's a tangent. There's so many remakes. There's so many sequels. Because they're safe, the you kind of guess how much money you're going to make before you make it. And then if you complain about it, you're being like, oh, why are you so negative, man? Isn't it cool to have another Ninja Turtles movie? But essentially, all these movies are like solved fucking cases before you even make them. It's so boring. It's so dispiriting to have like 80s nostalgia be like plumbed and dug and extracted constantly. Like... Oh yeah, they'll like this. Yeah, yeah. Make them another fucking make them another Marvel movie. Make them another thing with that's a sequel to something else. So it's like a bummer. So I think hopefully there is some sort of weirdo creative period. It might actually be sponsored and pushed by AI. If people can start making credible movies where they can type at home and make scenes and make something on their own, that's obviously too far in the other direction. But looking for things to kind of break the executive monopoly over creative things right now because there's always good stuff there's always bad stuff but there's periods where there's way too much unoriginal stuff and we're totally in one of those periods now so this is the one that had the crypt that i've already claimed okay so now we got to look for some more stuff so keep going west and southwest You want some of this? I hate this guy. Oh, I forgot, I forgot my buff. Still have Modern. Uh oh. I'm out of stamina. Okay, so should I go back and get my bone mass buff? I think I should. Whatever. This is just a scouting day. I'm not gonna like do an not gonna do a crypt. Agree with all you said, I also wanted to ask this earlier, but didn't you want to interrupt your thought? What is the movie or movies that forged your love? Um Watching Looney Tunes with my dad. Watching like old westerns with my dad when I was a kid. He really liked old stuff. Um like that being in college and taking film movies and being kind of like for the living by myself for the first time and like just being living in fucking outer space in my head starting to watch like um like magnolia by paul thomas anderson and pulp fiction to some degree um starting to watch a ton of music videos um starting to watch indie stuff and older stuff like scorsese like watch like um Starting to watch old Francois Truffaut movies. Those are like 70s and 60s ones. A lot of those things in class. Well, I didn't appreciate how much good stuff I was watching in class. There's a lot of like, they really give you like, over the course of like 26 or 30 weeks, whatever it is, you watch something cool every single week. You just don't like, you're just like, you're 20. You don't know what you're watching or like why it's important. But like, it opens your mind up even if you don't know what it is. Um, 
So like seventies and sixties, like new wave movies, Scorsese from the seventies, like Taxi, like like Mean Streets, Raging Bull, Taxi Driver. Those are classics. Taxi Driver, I still think is one of the best movies ever made for like nailing the new feel, the new dangerous feel to the world. Absolute classics. I'm sure there's other ones. There's a place called Queen Video in Toronto that I would get a lot of stuff from. Old Criterion Collection, like 40s and 50s Japanese movies, like Yasuhiro Ozu or Yasujiro Ozu. To some degree Kurosawa, but he's like a little bit overrated, I think. Um, there's a lot of really good stuff back there. Those are like better periods for movies to some degree. Man, I could go on forever. Westerns? Anthony Mann Westerns? With J some of them with Jimmy Stewart? He instantly drops ticks before he even sees anything. It's crazy. I don't think much of John I don't think much of John Ford, but there's like a lot of classic like Howard Hawks made amazing amazing westerns with like Dean Martin and all these guys. John he made great John Wayne movies. The Searchers with John Wayne was a great movie, like my only John Ford movie I really like honestly. The thing I didn't do before with dealing with the fireballs from Miss Gial is that I didn't understand how slow they are. They're quite slow. So I was dodging too early, then they're kind of like homing missing, homing missing on me. Yeah, that hit me, that's kind of bullshit, but whatever. Listening to a lot of music is like surprisingly really key to really liking movies. It's hard to say, but like once you start to like listen to a lot of stuff and you start to like picture in your head what it would sound like or like the way that some music from any decade and any sort of vibe, like just plays in your head, man. I was like listening to the radio this morning, like CBC, which is like basically NPR for Canada. And they're doing this like five essential songs for this guy named Gordon Lightfoot, who is this like super Canadian singer songwriter from the 60s or 70s. And like, you just hear these songs and they're like, they got that feel, like they got that 70s Americana feel to it. You know, even though he's Canadian, but like that 70s like North American feel of like, the open road and like hippie culture and hitchhiking and like folk music that shit is so cool i wish i liked it more when i was younger that was like a big rap time and i really liked hip-hop a lot but like increasingly that older shit man like van morrison that sh music is beautiful like absolutely beautiful okay so this is a hard zone to find stuff on what about you? What are the things that you like? What are the things that really nailed it for you? Like all time favorites. I feel like also like how old you are, like everyone is like, I feel like most people are like overflowing with passion in like their teens and early twenties. And you gotta like grab that period and hold on to it. Cause you're not always going to feel that way. So what's really meaningful and like what makes you like almost like cry when you're driving and that period, you're not going to necessarily feel that way when you're older. It's a village here. Dig site. And so like that's why people like always like the music that they heard like during that period or like the things they new during that period become meaningful to them because like that's a period where like you're passionate like not everyone has no not everyone has heart forever but you do have a lot of heart at that period like being a teen like being like 18 and like spending the evening with your girlfriend and then driving home listening to music and like life is like crazy at that time like everything feels so impactful you like kind of pull away over time. There's no skull here, that's bullshit.
rib cage. Auto mod held a message for a reason. Sex based terms. Oh, you said the word climax. Big problem. I mean, I feel the same way. Like, that's what I listen to now. I find. I find like movie music and like video game soundtracks is all I really like anymore. Or all I really listen to generally lately. Like, it, it hits you in the feels, you know? Those are great things to listen to. There was a whole period for a while, like, at this point it was like six, seven years ago, where I was like super depressed. A bunch of bad things happened to me all at once, and I basically just like only played video games and stayed up all night and like blocked the world out for a while. And I would like play, I would play games like League all night long and listen to like these endless soundtracks on YouTube of like thousands of like the best game soundtracks etc and hear all this shit I've never heard before and there's so many like rpg like ballads and like so many like powerful emotional songs in those kind of games and i was just like tripping balls it was so good automod automod doesn't like doesn't like what you're doing this looks like it might be a crypt like i can go down here i think yeah but like game soundtrack music and movie soundtrack music like gladiator old hand zimmer stuff like Lord of the Rings soundtracks. There's like, there's a guy named Vangelis, V-A-N-G-E-L-I-S, who made like the first synth soundtracks in the 80s. In the 80s, that guy is incredible. It sounds so good. This is a crit for sure. Whoa, hey buddy. Ooh. Hey. This is a crit for sure. Oh yeah, give it to me. Oh yeah, so good. Fantastic news. This is my crypt one. Fantastic news. Okay, so I found one, let's try to find some more. I was born mid nineties, my mom loves watching movies and watch Indiana Jones, Terminator, Men in Black, Predator. Those are amazing movies. The original Predator is awesome. It's like, my friends would watch it and they're like, oh, I want to work out so bad. These guys are like, that was a cool movie. The Predator himself was so cool. Original, the original two or three Indiana Jones movies, like the one with Sean Connery is so great. The original two Terminators are so different from each other, but they're both so good. The original Terminator is like a sci-fi thriller. And then the second one is like one of the biggest banger blockbuster action movies ever. The second one is crazy. They're so different, but they're both so good. The first one's a little more stylish, the second one's like a little more entertaining, honestly. They're so good. Hey, mom, a great taste. Oh. All right, be a jerk. Push me off the cliff. Oh, how's it feel to not be in the right height? Hey, is it, what is this, a fueling? You wanna just, don't worry, don't worry, I'll get some puffs. Um, man. There's so many good- there's so much good stuff back there. Okay, what is this secret party? Okay, how's my food handling? My food's handling pretty well. Oh! One time when I was in the one time I was in the planes, a lox knocked me off a cliff and I died of fall damage. It's insane. Yeah, those movies are great. Also, like, old Adam Sandler comedies. Like, Mr. Deeds is weirdly funny. Happy Gilmore is quite funny. Is this just instant? No, I'm just in speaker. I'm, what, what is that? That's a real hair. It's white. It looked white for a second. Does this guy does not want to fight me or what? Oh. Oh, that almost could have killed me. I have no stamina for this guy. I gotta, I gotta do a little loop de loop around the pillow for a second here. These guys actually have a crazy move set. Is he up there now? There's also like a ton of those like RPGs from that period that I thought like I just think generally. 
RPGs have sick ass music. It's like classical. There's all these guys and it's hard to remember what they all did, but there's so many talented people who made like really emotional, really beautiful music. Yeah. I think the Terminator both movies are masterpieces. They're just amazing. James Cameron said James Cameron said that movies like Terminator 1 were like what he called tech noir. That was like the genre he invented. It's kind of like Blade Runner is kind of like that. Like the dark detective movies that are based in the future, but the future is like cyberpunky. You know what I mean? Like he kind of like basically coined those terms. Um, my favorite Jim Carrey movie and the hardest to this day I've ever laughed in my life was Me, Myself, and Irene. Have you ever seen that movie? It's not his biggest one, but goddamn, is it funny. It's like a perfect movie. Have you seen it? With Rene Zellweger and three enormous fat, foul mouthed black kids who Jim Carrey adopts. Ooh, free rib, free hair meat. Yeah, I, I, I hope that you do end up seeing it one day because it is so, it is so great. I do hope you see it sometime. This is a cool fort. This is like really dilapidated. I guess I'll mark it on the map. That's not how you spell fort. <laughs> yeah, liar liar is good. What are some other really good, like, and then Truman Show is like, Truman Show is a strong contender for one of the best 90s movies. Like totally, like completely. Like one of those movies, like Truman, there's something, there's some weird thing going on in like the late 90s where like, um, that's a skull. Yeah. Okay. There's something going on in the late 90s where like, Truman Show and The Matrix, which are like probably two of the top five movies of the decade, both like knew what was coming in a way that to this day is still crazy to me, I think. Like, I never, I don't know, I think I think with The Matrix like all the time, like every month at some point, I think with The Matrix and how crazy that movie was for that time. Like, how did they fucking know what things were going to be like? It's almost one of those things where it's, like, so popular that it, people forget how original that was. The kind of way that, like... What is that What is that Pixar movie with, like, the enormous fat people just, like, sitting there with, like, hoverbots with a screen in front of their head? Is that WALL-E? Things like that, who be like, oh, yeah, it's so obvious. It's not that deep. But it is deep. Like... When you nail something like that, it's not easy to do. Yeah. It's like, oh, it's not that creative. Everyone's seen that movie, but it's sick. Same thing with The Matrix. Like, it's cr like the sequels are so bad. Don't get me wrong. They're so bad. But... It's like hard to... Ex I don't know. It just... It feels like... They nailed what the world is like and like the scary nightmares of what might happen like 24 years ago. Oh. All these guys are like shiny. It's creepy. They're all rainy and shiny. Just hitting. Look, I'm just hitting. I'm just hitting ground in front of them. Battle in this game is so triggering sometimes. Come on. Don't worry. Let's get my Jotun puffs. And then just the sequels were like, wow, these are so trash. I couldn't believe it. I don't think the swords and armor are made of different stuff. Might as well at least have them. I think Pulp Fiction, The Truman Show, and The Matrix. I mean, there are other good ones. There are other movies that are insane. But I think I would be fairly good. 
doing a top three or top five is always hard because it's always so easy to do the first two or the first four but then when you have to but then when you have to commit to the last one that closes the circle that's when li ranking lists gets really hard um but i would be pretty fine with truman show the matrix and pulp fiction being like great candidates for the top three movies of the 90s there's also shindo's list Jurassic Park is always like amazing, not quite like the same kind of whatever, but like uh, still like a timeless movie, which they did so well for that period. Pulp Fiction is like uh, really, really influential, really, really influential, but like still probably I kind of feel like that's like the, the high that Tarantino has been chasing ever since. Tarantino is like the classic guy who like likes what he likes and he doesn't care about like context. Every time he goes in a talk show, every time he like does a talk, he like 100, I respect it. I'm like someone who reads a lot of like what critics say and like try to take other people's opinions in who are like older and smarter than me to like kind of like help me think about stuff or like help me like figure out what to think for better or for worse. But he is like, no, what I like is what I like and I don't care. Like here's the best movies, here's the worst decades. Here's like what, here's everything that I think. Here's like Jaws is the most perfect movie ever. Like random ass like quasi blockbusters or like mainstream movies. He'd be like, this is like, oh, there's planes over here and cloudberries. I love cloudberries. They're so easy to find. He'll go on shows. He'd be like, this is a perfect movie. It's like, what? This is like some random ass cable TV shit. Apparently, he's, apparently Tarantino, Tarantino is a podcast. Okay, so is there... Hold on. What is going on here? I'm fighting shamans? Is this meadows? This is prairie. Black forest there. Okay, got it. Okay, so is there more mistlands this way? I do know there's more mistlands this way, across the way. So I think I go back for now, and then I pick up the stuff to... Uh... I think I go back for now and I pick up the stuff. I'm not doing more secret meat. Fuck you. Actually, no, I will. I can make the whole meat platter. I'm going to go back now and then I'm going to bring the stuff to make a ship. And then I'm going to port a ship here and then fly across to the next one. Because I think there's not much more I'm really going to find. Yeah, I feel the same way, for sure. Like, all, I don't know. Like, the ways that people will say, we can't afford to do this, or the environment won't let us do this. Here's what you have to settle for, for, like, diet and entertainment. Like, here's what you're going to have to eat from now on. I'm going to here. He's going to kill me. Here's what you guys should eat from now on. You can't enjoy meat. You can't have these things. Here's what you're going to eat. You stay inside your house and watch, like, streaming services. Like, that's all, like, in the same fucking ballpark as the Matrix. It's like, climate hysteria. Performative virtue shit don't get me wrong like there's a lot of ways that we're messing up the planet i'm not doubting that at all but the people that are messing up the planet are people like fucking enron not like me at home putting the recycling in the wrong fucking bin it's like this horrible fucking stupid guilt people have oh i i get stakes so it's my, like, I'm the person harming the climate. Cows are horrible. Really? You don't think it's like sulfur dioxide being pumped from like, fucking enormous smokestacks? You don't think it's like Dow Chemical? You don't think it's like the Koch brothers? You don't think these are the problems? Making products that you're like, the entire world is made of plaques, plastics and petrochemicals. And these are like, and it's our problem for like, I should eat like lentils. You know what I mean? Hey buddy, I'm in the middle of a lot of rants. I'm just running around the Mistlands. 
But I do have enough stuff now. But who are these guys fighting? What was that a seeker? Black marble? Nice. They're fighting this guy? Okay. Yeah, good job, boys. Teamwork. Yeah, I'm Ted talking in I'm Ted talking in hardcore over here. I had a nap, but I'm feeling re-energized. Um, okay, I'm gonna leave you guys alone. I'm not gonna hurt you. I love you all. Please don't hurt me. Please don't kill me and get me trapped in your cellars forever. But I do have enough stuff to make my sorcerer set now. And my pyramid is finished, and my pyramid is nice. I'd like to see your pyramid. My pyramid is pretty nice. Yeah, I'm excited for my cape too. I'm excited. So I have a question. I should have enough now to do most of them, but I assume that I should do the frost or fire staff first, or maybe like one of one of two. It's gonna be cool to have new weapons and like a different play style. There's the necromancy staff. There's the protection staff. There's the fire one and the frost one. And the fire one and frost one seems pretty different. I'm looking forward to that a lot. Pew, 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 pew. Oh. Okay. I walk through the mountain, so obviously that's why I'm getting attacked by feelings. That makes sense. Alright, okay. Alright, fellas. Let's get to some flat ground, and I'll show you what's up. What is that? What's the story? Alright, fellas. Let's not do... Let's not get... Let's not get too excited here. Are they gonna fight each other? Can I just watch? Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm out of here. I'm sick of you dudes. Oh. Oh. What's that? Coins? This is mayhem out here. There's two swords here. Swords. 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 Gun. Okay, I would like to find one more structure, if that's okay. Or one more crypt would be nice. Like the actual Deverger home? I haven't seen one of those motherfuckers in a while. What's that? That's a crypt, yeah. So I didn't come down this south. I think it's morning. Alright. Okay, my food's a bit too low for this party. Oh. Oh. I can't even get this I can't even get like my my stagger damage off because the I get it to flatter ground. Oh it's so annoying, oh my god. Okay, give me some flatter ground. Trying to bust out the sword. There you go. Oh he's back. That was kind of pointless. Because I just used all my stamina on the block. One thing I was saying before, which I kind of interrupt myself on, is there are so many great, specifically Japanese, like video game soundtrack guys. Personally, stemming from Chrono Trigger and Xenogears, my favorite is Yasunori Matsuda. There's also, like obviously Nobuo Uematsu is also amazing. There's also Motoi Sakuraba. The guy who did the Streets of Rage games is an absolute monster as well. I like the person who did the Secret of Mana games as well. Very distinctive. But Yasunori, and there's a lot of really talented people. The guy who, Motoi Sakuraba was actually really amazing. But Yasunori Mitsuda has made like some of my favorite songs, regardless of genre, ever. He'll have like random live music, like live instrument, beautiful songs on like 
legit no name games that are so good. He's a song from a game called like the Seventh Seal or something. That's like an absolutely heartrendingly beautiful guitar song, like Spanish guitar song. It's incredible. It's incredible. The Xenogear soundtrack I've listened to more than I've listened to like maybe anything. He's so good. He'll have songs from like sh like random PS1 and PS2 games that like probably didn't even come to Can probably didn't even come to North America. And there's like these songs are beautiful. Beautiful. Xenogears is one of those games that I'm kind of like worried to play. And that I'm gonna like sob when I'm playing it. I know I will. I gotta choose the right moment. It's been a while. Okay, so I look like I mostly covered this Mistland strip. Hopefully I can get back when there's still a good amount of daylight. Those are the big moments. Those are like the important parts of it. Like to like show that it's meaningful. That is like an all time great game. It was very influenced by Neon Genesis Evangelion. It was very influ it was very influenced by Neon Genesis Evangelion and it's interesting how the production issues that Evangelion had were reflected in the production issues that Xenogears had and that basically it was too ambitious and the executives kind of cut its scope so that it ended badly but Evangelion is such an enormous fucking enormous blockbuster in Japan that it got the four feature length movies that recently finished that came out over like 15 years to like get the redo but all those guys from xenogears went on to make monolith software and squaresoft being like borderline dickheads now obviously hold on to the ip and they'll never be able to do xenogears the proper way they wanted to and eventually someone or other is going to like completely butcher it in a in a remake they completely butcher it i know they will I'm just mad about it because that's like my one of my favorite games from when I was young. Oh, this guy's gonna kill me! I turn my weapons away. Um. So the thing with anime is that too many series are too long, so I try not to watch those ones. I don't get it when someone's like, I've been watching Hunter x Hunter for like 10 years or something, One Piece, etc. So I try for a long time to like just watch the classic features. Like watch the Satoshi Kon movies. Um, like, I don't know, like a lot of like, uh, obviously the Ghibli ones. Um, Grave of the Fireflies like really really hurts every time I watch it. I've watched it twice now. I, you gotta watch it. You gotta watch how how few. You gotta be careful how many times you watch that. Um, like Akira. I tried to watch like the true classics of the features, but there are some series that I've gone back and watched, or like so. There's some series that I've watched that I liked. I liked Ergo Proxy. I like Psychopaths. I watched Neon Genesis Evangelion like several times and then watched all the movies like last winter. Um, there's a lot of stuff. Do you like watching it? Oh, my body's pretty far. Fuck. I don't know if I can do this naked. Oh, I'm dead. Oh my god. Uh, here we go into a death loop. I 
I watched Attack on I watched Attack on Titan. It's a pretty sick show. Ghost in the Shell, classic movies. I don't like the sequel very much. Yeah, I mean, that's cool. I feel like anime also is like different depending on when you were born. Like, there used to be like anime that'd be on like Cartoon Network or something like late at night, like Ninja Scroll or shit. And you're like, oh, this is amazing. But I felt like there's a period where like, let's say, I think if you're born like in the mid nineties or early nineties or on, I think a lot of people started watching anime if they were like not like really conventional jocks or something. And you start to have like, everybody has like streaming free episode torrent access to like a larger degree. And everyone starts watching anime because you could watch like unlimited anime, anime on like YouTube and like torrent files. And like it became this whole cultural thing. And like, so there's all this stuff available that people were watching really regularly because it was like unlimited fucking access, like programming. Yeah, exactly. Like Inuyasha, all that stuff. It became like a new thing for a new gen, like for a new thing for a new generation. Can't get too close to the planes, or else I'm gonna gonna get assassinated again. I would like to be able to see. This is the worst of both worlds. I can't see and I'm about to get assassinated by a Tuskito. Yeah, see. Okay. And Dragon Ball Z is so good. Like the qu it's like the king of filler, but it's still so good. All right, time to be serious here. Proper food and proper outfit. Um, Dragon Ball Z is so good. Like, super influential. Um, like... I don't know, man. There's a lot during that period. That, like... Is super inferential. I also feel like there's boom boom boom. I should get a wisp light. Do I have a wisp light? And I feel like also there's like a good period where you can dodge the like like porn brained sexual like fetishization period i think people who are like at this point between like whatever age like mid-20s or younger like got caught up like sometimes got caught up in some bullshit that like i don't think is necessarily healthy there's some like way more like weirdo shit and way more people have like if you like play league or like look on like some social media etc there's a whole bunch of people i think are like super porn brained like femboy catboy like weirdo shit it's like a little more like okay now. That's like so bad. You gotta watch out for that. Some of that shit's gone too far. I see a lot of like league names and what people will like think are jokes. I'm like, yeah, it's a joke, but you also think about this too much. I know you do. I forgot to bring a fist to kill this guy. Damn it. Where's he at? Still the goddamn motor buff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Deskitos. Classic. 
healing. See, I'm in big trouble here. I use good food too. Oh, they hit me. Now the other is gonna get me. Ugh. Okay, how's my stamina? Okay, before there's a fueling there too. Okay, where's the other one? Ugh. Where's the other one? Come on, hit me. Ugh. Okay, sprint. Big trouble. There's a locks right there. There's a whole family of locks right here. I'm in so much trouble. Okay, I gotta zoom out. Oh my god. Wait, this is gonna be bad. Oh, oh! Okay, I'm a 10. Heal, 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 heal. Okay. Oh god. I don't care, it's two fucking stamina potions. I'm getting out of here. Oh my god. Oh. Oh, there's a fueling right there. Okay, they're both in front of me. Oh. One more Deskido. Oh. These guys I can just run from. Oh my god, please. There's no one, ask Zemi and you have had enough time to like understand this. No one understands the tempo and pace of pain and solitude and depression that Valheim gives me more than me. <laughs> have, do other people suffer as much playing this game as I do? I don't know. I don't know that, maybe nobody knows that. I'm like hot, I'm like hot under my skin right now. I can't believe I made it through that. Oh! Where's that Deskido? Okay, give me like a nice seeker or something to assassinate these dudes. Hold on. Okay, this is where the water is, right? Holy shit, man. I mean, thank you. Sometimes I'm not. Sometimes I'm like... Oh god, there's a lox there. Oh shit. Oh, I'm not through it yet. But at least if I die here, it's not that bad. Oh. Oh, I'm so dead. Oh, please give me stamina. Yeah, there we go. At least I'm close to my base now. Um, sometimes yes, but I'm finding that streaming is making me a better person in some ways. I know that's not always the case. Like people like bitching and like people like, maybe like watch people bitch, but I have to moderate my opinions and my reactions a little bit because it's public. But sometimes I cry and bitch and whine the whole time, the whole time. And like complain about stamina, you see me, complain about stamina, complain about everything. I do that a lot. Sometimes. It depends. Depends on the day. Fucking Valheim. I gotta get this done in like a week. I have company as of the 8th. At that point, I still can still do it. But like, July is a little weird. Okay, at least there's one more crypt here. So once I go make my sorcerer set, I have one crypt to play around in. And then after that, I'll have dinner. I'm kinda hungry. I'm a little bit obsessed lately. It's been like two years of me going to the gym regularly. I'm starting to get a little bit obsessed with my like fat content. Like I don't mean to be like whatever, but like I'm probably like in the high 20, the high teens. So. Shit could be better. But I like eating a lot. And I always want to like have enough nutrients in me that I have a nutrient surplus. But I'm kind of holding on to too much chub, I think. I'm starting to get to the point to think about it more. Oh, there's a gal here too? We're just, we got everything going on here. Look at this guy. Look at this fucking nightmare. Alright, making a run for it. 
I think the fueling's gone. There's a tick in the water. If I go under here, they can't catch me. There's a fueling. He's right here, he's right in front of me. I can't see shit. I'm gonna die. Okay. Um, okay, where are we are here? Okay, we gotta run this way. Oh, this is a mistake, not putting my clothes on. Because those guys, these ticks are gonna stun me. Oh my god. Fuck this game. I still have a lot of stamina. Uh, 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 uh. Okay, this is good. Get me the fuck out. Uh. Yeah, it's all fine. <laughs> I'll see you all never. I'm never coming back. Just kidding, I need that crypt. But it's gotta be the next day, because that's like half my daylight, at least, from deaths. The double locks, the fuelings, the triple death skeeto. At least I made it back to like a part where it was closer. Okay, what am I doing? I think everything's fine. I think I got most of my stuff back. I just I just lost those potions. Yeah, that was this fucking game, man. Okay. So I gotta make sure I get my i gotta refill some of my healing potions let's do that now before i forget i gotta put away my second set that was interesting before a while ago i was thinking i wonder what the light set is because in every biome there's like the heavy armor set that's effective but has nothing interesting about it and there's the light set that has actual, like, skill stuff to it. Like, the troll set was sneaking. The root set was archery. The Fenris set is, like, giga speed. All that stuff is really great. So this one gets to be the magic user set. So it's even better than ever. That is so great. We have four kinds of food for some reason. Coins. We're doing great. We're doing just great. Okay, so here's the here's the pyramid. For some reason, two of the four quarter spires at the top were not staying on, but I realized it's because the pyramid was on stone blocks on one side and on marble blocks on the other side. So I put marble blocks on both sides and that supports it all the way up. Is this is this the same size that yours was, Zemi? Is this shit done yet? Nice. Sorry, is that empty? It said, it said zero, right? I don't know what's happened. This is suddenly difficult. There you go. Okay. So I gotta fix this. I gotta make this door bigger, better, and I gotta find a door for the other side. Otherwise, it's all fine. Locks cape. Okay. Okay, can you be done soon? How many's left in there? One more sap, okay. I'm gonna sit and watch the oven like a little kid. That's still my mom's favorite picture of me. She's like three years old wearing red full body pajamas. Stand, I'm at the same height as the oven door, so I'm standing looking in the oven door. Looking at, looking to see if an apple pie is ready. That's still me, at heart, is the little kid looking, waiting for the apple pie to be finished. My mom's a great baker. Chocolate chip, Toll House chocolate chip cookies, blueberry pancakes, apple pie, rhubarb, strawberry rhubarb crisp, apple crisp, blueberry pie. Oh, she's so good. Baking's hard. It's so precise. I never want to do baking. I want to like play around with a dish and like cook stuff and add butter and like spices and everything. But baking, I'm getting a little bit into. Like I make pancakes now like once a week. I used to make chocolate. I used to make like these chocolate, double chocolate cookies. These like flourless double chocolate cookies like a couple of winters ago. I'm starting to get into it more. But I just never had the stuff, you know? You gotta like plan ahead and like have everything. 
But once you get it, it lasts a while. Hopefully when I find these, hopefully this one crypt will give me four more cores, smile. And then I'll have enough to build the Black Forge and this thing. Can you please just finish? I have to pee, I'll be right back. Alright, is it done? I also tried that sardine recipe recently. It was so good. Gonna have it with basil when we restock on those. You did? You had it? Oh, I'm so happy to hear that. I'm gonna have it tomorrow for lunch. Oh, I'm being poisoned. The basil is clutch. Did you have like, uh, did you have sweet onions with it? Like, did you have, did you have the onions and tomato slices with it? I only have shallots right now and shallots are like no joke. They're like a little bit too strong. They're a little bit too close to garlic and red onions to necessarily work with that, but they are still very good. Okay, so. I'm gonna take this bitch apart. Ooh, it lagged the game for a second. What is the inventory? Is it the eater? How much does this weigh? This is a hundred pounds? That makes no sense at all. I love it. A hundred pounds. You did? I'm so happy you made that recipe. Yeah, yeah. It's so good. Okay, I should make these black marble to uh, finish this up. I'll do that after. A little salt, a little olive oil, a little pepper. Mmm. It tastes like a really, really nice tuna sandwich. Okay, so what do I need? I need to make the black forge, right? Or do I need to make the, no, I need to make the galdir table. So five more metal, five more wood. Wait, 10 more wood, right? Yeah. It's good that the Yudrasa wood is like relatively easy to get. I appreciate that. And five ether. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. I have 120. Oh really? Oh, you've had it twice? Yeah, I, you're doing great. Did you use like a baguette or what kind of bread did you use? I'm gonna put it inside here for a meme value. Potato? Okay. I was a little worried there for a second. You like put it into a mat put it into like a half baked potato or something? 
I was a little stressed. Okay, so here we go. So I got my sticky note. So 20, 40, 55 eater, 15 linen, 16 linen, 20 linen, 56 linen. Okay, I got that part already. 10 feathers, 5 scale hide. What about this one? 10 feathers, 15 scale hide. Okay, feather cape, 10 more feathers. So 20 feathers, 20 scale hide. And then which staff should I make first? Sixteen eater, twenty grass of wood. Okay, so first off, we need to make a staff because without that, you can't do anything, right? So here's what I'm thinking: this staff has blunt damage and fire damage, uses ether 35. But this one only has frost damage. Think fire first? This one feels like, maybe it's like, why does this have blunt damage? I don't want to hit them with a staff. I want to fire magic from it. This uses 40% of your health for a magical shell. A magical shield that absorbs damage. That means magic damage, right? I do think a stat, this seems like a more hardcore thing. This is, one, I don't know, I want both. So 16 per, 20 Yggdrasa wood, four freeze land, four cores. Four freeze, four cores. So let's do a little math here. So it's 32, how much, the, and then the cape is what? 20, so it's, 52. The fireball deals blunt damage on direct hits. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's fine. Cool. All right. Let's do that then. Um, I, I think that I want both, but I think I can do both. So it's 55, 75, 107. I think I need 107 eater for the cape, the three pieces, and two staves. Okay, so let's just make the Staff of Embers first. You draw some wood, Sirtling Core, Refined Ether. I kinda wanna make both staves first, to be honest. How many Sirtling Cores? Four Cores. And then four freeze clans. And then 32 eater. Oh boy, 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 oh boy. Gee, I don't have enough stamina, I need some food. Doesn't let you recoup your stamina. Rude. I can't believe this is like 120 pounds. That's so crazy. It makes no sense at all. This is like it's like a black hole. Okay. Just is this firing out of the world? Quit it. Oh boy! Oh boy! Oh boy! Oh boy! Oh boy! I'm gonna get over there and forget, remember that I forgot one thing. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Oh, I'm so happy. Oh my god. Okay. 
Let's stay focused. I'm not going to test them out yet. Yeah. Well, I don't know. They're like they're like super. There's like a there's like a galaxy in each one. That's why they're that's why they're so heavy. Okay. So again, fifty five for the costume. Okay, I got all my things here. Fifty five each for the costume. Twenty feathers, twenty scale height. I'm pretty sure I have twenty feathers. Nice. Twenty scale. I'm swimming in scale hides. Fifty six linen. I'm swimming in linen. I'm rich. I'm not food rich. I'm never food rich. And then fifty five. Boom boom. Oh boy. I'm gonna make one more trip for the feather cape. I could have thought ahead and brought everything. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. <laughs> oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. These artfully layered robes have spells and charms sewn to every seam and fold. Oh boy. The trousers worn by mages are always especially tight. Discomfort fuels the focus that is needed for magic. Makes no sense. I'm still upset by that. Oh, my inventory's full. Wait, I don't have enough of the hood? What'd I forget? Two iron. Okay. Okay. Yeah, alright. Oh boy, this is so great. I gotta... Uh, four wood. Do I have charcoal in there? I need four charcoal. Three charcoal. That's how this is... That's how my day is going. One, one wood. Oh, I have wood. Okay, never mind. Uh, okay. Some of these things I need to get rid of. So I got one wood, put that in now, and then two iron ore. That's here, right? Yeah, everything's fine. It's all planned. And by the time this coal is finished burning, the fourth one's ready. Look at that. Incredible synergy. I'm gonna go shoot. I'm gonna be like, I have a friend of mine who always thought he wanted, he'd like to go to like a weird Middle Eastern or European country and like pay some guy money so he can shoot RPG, he can shoot RPG explosives at like a goat or something. A little barbaric, but it's kind of funny at some level. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take my I'm gonna take my high powered staves out into the air and find a boar or a neck, and I'm just gonna end him. I'm gonna end him so hard. I'm like an American soldier in Iraq or something. Come on. It's got a little mouth and tongue going on. It's like... I'm going to. Oh yeah, there it is. I'm so excited. Oh my god, I've earned this. Okay, wait. Just, we didn't fuck around, right? Everyone has that moment where instead of upgrading something, they craft a new one. This is kind of in the same ballpark. Robe. Eater weave hood. Sorcery shows itself in the eyes, so most mages wear cowls to disguise their occult pursuits. Yeah, we're doing great. So I have this stuff now, so now I need 15 Eater for the cape. And then the piece de resistance is complete. How's, how's our Eater supply doing? Ooh, we're getting low. But we have more. We just don't have the... Okay, now... I'm gonna look at the upgrades. What is gravity but an effective entropy? Man, I feel... I can fly... I, I can float now! Fall damage is a thing of the past! Okay. This is actually not bad. I suspect... Okay, the robe... 16 armor, 18 armor, Eater regen, 40 movement speed. So it's it's not that good to upgrade. It's just more armor. So let's take a look at the staff. S 
six more damage, six more fire damage. Everything else is essentially the same. A little more block force. But it's actually pretty low on Eater. So we will be able to upgrade these pretty well. But Staff for sure more important than the armor. Because the armor, this is pitiful armor anyway. Look, this is 32 armor on the helmet. This is fucking 16. So you do the two weapons first. I would actually say probably getting the other weapons is more important. Having four weapons, 40% health, that's so cool. Okay, so 16, thirty-two eater for the other two staffs. I know that, 14 per. All right, we're doing, we're doing just great. Okay, let's have the grand reveal, time to strip naked. Oh boy, I'm so excited. Okay, so now I have to undo the... Now I have to undo the table and make the thing again. And then get started on the rest of the processing points. Where's the, where's the lighting best? Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, here we go. Where's my cape? Oh yeah, this is great. This is everything. Do I wait a minute? Do I not have either? That mean I can't use it. All right, we're good. You probably can't use it without Eater, right? Yeah. Pew pew pew! Alright, I got a little excited there for a second. Okay, so my food is fading. So I have... I have no full Eater meals. But this is the only thing that gives it, right? Literally, this is the only thing. Alright. 25 is all we need. Let's go find a necktail and explode his entrails all over the floor. He's gonna probably kill me. This is a great moment. Hey Kai, how you doing, bud? All right. Where are you, little fucks? There he is. Oh, I don't have enough to use it. All right. That's just classic. That is just classic. All right. That's pretty sweet. He's dead, right? I have to buy a. Is that a deer? That's oh, a tree. I have to. I have to make the stupid mushroom caps. Sixteen. Yeah. How do you like me now? I can't even use the other one. Holy shit. Okay, time to make some food and use the other one. Look at that thing. I should put lights around the top of it. Wisp torches. That'd be cool. All right, so do I have one wood on me? Yes. What do I need to make this thing? Uh, what food? Yggdrasil porridge. Sap barley royal jelly. Yeah. And then seeker aspic. And then... Uncooked stuffed shrooms. Okay, got it. What a lame bus driver. Why can't he just let you- why can't he just leave you alone? In Vancouver, you could either use, like, the card, or you could use your credit card. 
but half the time when people use their credit cards, it didn't work because it would like block the purchase because they thought it was like scamming or something. The bus drivers were like, I don't care, just get on. Have you ever tried to like tap your credit card? So for a while, if you have one of the cards that doesn't work, my friends didn't work. I was like, why are you spending money on the Metro Pass? Just click the card and then look at the guy and he's like, yeah, just get on. You could just do that indefinitely. Uncooked stuffed shroom, mage cap, blood clot, turnips, royal jelly, barley, sap, seeker meat. Do I remember all that? This, 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 and barley and what? Barley and sap. So what can I give away? Throw the wood away? The wood here? With the barley? I think this gives me one of everything. Seeker aspect. Inventory full. We're having a, we're having a hard time over here. It's fair. It's fair. What am I missing? Uncooked. Blood clot and turnip. Well, I really blacked out on like half of that, didn't I? All right. Uh, blood clot. That was so. I, that's a. That whole system is so annoying. Did I make this already? No. Did I make this already? Yes. Uncooked stuffed shroom. That whole thing is so annoying. Like, I grew up in Ottawa. Ottawa is like only now has like a rail system, but mostly had like buses. Buses compared to subway subways come every three minutes and they stop and they get on and then you leave and if you miss it There's another fucking subway in like five minutes buses are like they're too human a bus driver has to like choose to wait for you a Bus driver can like choose to leave Before you get there a bus driver can tell you your transfer is not there the subway system is just like yeah Yeah, we just need to move everybody as fast as possible. Just whatever money you can spare hook us up it's like they're like trying to actually process people it's like a fucking airport bus drivers are like no not you it's too much it's too much okay what am i missing i'm short on sap this is too annoying man you don't need that i was in ottawa yesterday the rain is in the, like the th it was like thunderstorms it was absolutely crazy Inventory full. We're having a great time over here. Okay, blood clot. There. So, one you grassle porridge. Okay, I'm not gonna waste all this food. But whatever one I deem to be the least valuable, which is the seeker aspect, I'm gonna use. And then we're gonna fire, and then we're gonna go nuke a goat with our RPG. Well, that's some, oh man, that is some big ass mana. Are these all like this? 80? 85? Oh man, that's a huge difference. Alright. Alright, who's trying to get nuked? So excited. I'm also going to be so squishy. Like in this gear. Like things are going to wreck me. Plus all my health is like in mana? <laughs> Oh. oh, that was satisfying. Does it go right where you shoot it? It goes right where you shoot it. Oh man, that is just... I'm... My nipples are rock hard. You can't see it with the black t-shirt. But I'm just cutting through them right now. Oh yeah. That raspberry bush? Fuck him. Oh, it's got an arc to it. Does this have an arc to it? Pew 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 pew. Pew 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 pew. That is wildly inaccurate. Listen, I'm not trying to be sexual here. I'm just excited. <laughs> pew, 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 pew. Is it is this because my elemental magic stat is so low? 
I'm not sexually excited. That much. Did I get him? Oh man, this is everything I ever wanted in this game. And there it is. And there it is. And there it is. And there it is. Oh man. Okay, so it, it is. Fat boy and whatever the other one's called. Little something. I forget the name of the second one. Um I don't know whether I should do three magic foods or whether I should have one thing that makes me chunkier. I think I'll just bring four. Oh my god, I'm so excited. Okay, so the rest of the day. I'm making as much food as I can. Oh my god. Does it cook the meat? Imagine it cooks the meat for you. That'd be great. Okay, never mind. Let's not get too excited. They're both pretty cool, but this one, this is ridiculously inaccurate. Look at that. It's sick though. Oh boy, I'm so excited. Okay, so. Do I... Do I... Do I use the restaurant? I can't make... I don't have enough to make another staff. But I do have enough to probably do another upgrade. But I don't think I have enough to do two upgrades. So I... I gotta, I gotta, up, I gotta use the rest of my eater on one of these. I'm like drooling over here. I can't even talk. Um... Okay, so how much are the upgrades? Let's just let's just get it together here. Eight per upgrade. Gotcha. Oh my god. I am so excited. How much do I have? I have eight. Interesting. Interesting how that works out. Um If the thing I'm doing is crypts, I kind of feel like the frost one is a little better. Do you not already have- Kai, don't you already have a solo Valheim world somewhere? Existing somewhere? Okay, what else do I need? I needed- I needed uh, Nagasaki wood, I mean Yggdrasil wood. Ten wood and two cores. Alright. Fire staff, come on, it's too good not to do. Oh my god, I can't even- like I'm- like my heart is going pitter patter right now. Okay, I also need to make a lot of food, so what can I get rid of currently? I can put my sword and everything and take that away. We're not we're not we're not in the, we're not in the sword we're not in the sword game anymore. Put those there for now. I'm just everything's going to shit. But it's so good. Okay. Uh bu 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 ten wood. Oh man, I'm so excited. Where the fuck did that just go? There we go. I am so excited. Yeah, but like the the game doesn't the game update? Like will it be compatible with like recent patches? Wait, what am I missing? Error, what am I missing? Oh, you have to upgrade this thing more. Rune table. Ten eater black marble. Okay, well that solves it then. We can't upgrade it till I get more. Okay, so in that case, break this bad boy apart. So what do I need for the eater refinery? Black marble and sap. Okay, got it. Black marble and sap, how much? Twenty black marble. Okay. 
I got too many things going on here. I got the fucking food. I'm completely overwhelmed. If you discover the miss signs before they update, it will not be up to the end of save slot. Any other undiscovered miss signs locations can be, though. I think they had miss lands as like a placeholder with like webs and like rocks and shit. It'd be interesting to find out. Okay. What am I doing here? Okay, put the food away. For now. Um, put these things over here. Where is my, where is my cowl? Okay, there we go. So I need sap for the thingy. Do I have enough for the thingy now? No, the black metal, but the black metal is waiting over there for me. That location won't be updated with the current. Well, what would it, what would it be then? Back in the days when this used to be an eater refinery, why is it no longer an eater refinery? What the fuck? This is just classic. Interesting. Yeah. I don't know, Kai. Having a new one has its moments. It just depends whether you think you'll keep going with it or whether you eventually kind of get bored. Okay, what is the fuck is the problem here? What the fuck is the problem? Um, please? This is a weird pickle. This was very much here before in the exact same setup. The only thing difference is that there was marble, f there was more stone floors here. This is super weird. There's no spot that's gonna work. So, okay, drop this, let's take those two out, pick this back up, try it now. Ooh, maybe the problem is the roof. Oh shit. That's probably it, right? Oh god, it's so annoying. I should have I should have kept this and just got more cores. Damn, this is bad. Okay, so So I gotta bust up the ceiling. This thing's gonna fall if I do that. I wish I could get an angle here where I knew what was interfering. It was basically like this before. Ooh, this is gonna be bad.
Please work. You can maybe pickaxe down and level, make it lower. Oof. I do that, I'm worried it's gonna be too low. I think I think you're making the right call though. I just like it the way it is now. You might actually be it might, you, you might actually be right. Like it might actually make it easier to like find the right area to do it. Okay. You're so smart. It flashed there for a second, right? It's I'm in the vicinity. You're so smart. Oh my god. Okay, great. So now I can get that black marble back. Okay. Okay, so nothing fell apart, which is, you know, benefit. Black marble plinth. Okay. Put this bad boy around. Okay, so. Um, Put some of this stuff back. Let's return some sanity to our lives here. Sap I need. So get an eight stack of sap and a 20 stack of soft tissue and let's go to work. One thing I don't understand in this game is how sometimes if you do one and then four, you get one and then four. But sometimes if you do one and then four, you get this. I think it's if you do it really, really quickly I think my cat wants in. I heard a, I heard a pitiful yell. One second. There it is. There it is. Good girl. There's like a. Whenever the, something's going on lately, where she's like freaked out by the by the door she comes out of. So when she walks to the door, she's really careful, and then she like skips through. There's like nothing there. There's just like the same sort of floor mat. But she's like something's freaking her out about like the front door, and she always goes through it in this like really spooky fashion. Just like being held, really. She'll never like whenever I hold her, she like looks look, looks away. She'll purr sometimes. There. She's never gone into the little condo. It's always on top. Some, but there's something weirding her out. There's something weirding her out going in and out of the door lately. I'm not sure why. Okay, so we got the stuff. Hi, have you played any Ark lately? Oh, sorry, any City Skylines? But this is actually maybe even easier to get into now. Okay, so now I make all my food, and then I go to bed. And then I make dinner, and then tonight is a crypt. I'm so excited. Oh my god. Okay. So I need, let's go through this again. I need mage cap mushrooms. I need royal jelly. I need turnips. I need seeker meat. What else was there? 
sap, barley. Blood clot. I'm a little worried about the sap. But I'm not worried about the blood clot. I'm not worried about the barley either. The sap you can always get more of. Okay, so let's make a big part. Let's make a real party going down here. So I'll get the sap one more time before bed. Okay. So how many do I make? Eight? That's two. That's two. Tonight is... Tonight is shrimp jambalaya. So... Um, the shrimp are uncooked with the shells off and there's the tails on. Or I have the ones that are still have the shells on, which I have to take off myself. So it's going to be shallots and red chili flakes in olive oil in the cast iron pan. And then... Half a red pepper chopped into thin slices. And then... Shrimp and ham. Ham diced into small cubes. And then cook that down till it's mostly done. And then arboreal rice, coated in the oil, turned around and us was coated in oil, and then a half a can of diced tomatoes, blended so there's liquid, and chicken stock. And then you keep the chicken stock at a level, kind of like risotto style, so it'll eventually absorb all the way down until the, the risotto is cooked. The arboreal rice is cooked, but you gotta cover it. Any sort of short grain rice will do. And then if I want to be really hardcore about it, I ramp up the heat right at the end when most of the liquid is taken out to get a nice crispy layer of rice along the bottom. It's a pain in the dick to clean, but it does make it very, very good and gives it like a smoky taste. And you can top the dish with the crisp, dark brown rice along the top. So that's dinner tonight. And then I'll have a little piece of chocolate. I've got these little Kit Kats. I got a matcha latte, matcha latte Kit Kat from a Japanese store that was gifted to me from like some candy store in, in New York. And I got little fruit jellies as well. And that's dinner. Okay, did I, did I make eight? No, I'm sure one. Seeker Aspic. I think Aspic is like what people made like in the 70s, like with gelatin. But this comes, this makes more. What am I missing? Mage cap, so I got plenty of those. Don't worry about that. So yeah. I started making the, sh the jambalaya instead of like just basically like a shrimp stir fry the same way I make the salmon because I was eating shrimp with the shells on. And if you're stir frying something and the shell is still on it, kind of overrated. Um, you don't get much, you don't get much of like the absorption. So I figured I'd do some sort of dish where it's still absorbing a bunch. It's, it, it actually is in liquid, so it absorbs a bunch. That's kind of like my justification. Where that would go? Here it is. I bought. I made all those Jotun puffs. I don't even need them anymore. I had. Uh, I worked at a kitchen that was like. Thank you. I appreciate that. I worked at a kitchen that was like. They thought I was one of those guys who needed to know the science of it, but I was just curious about it. He's like, here, here's a book. We we do things by feel here, but if you want to learn the fucking nerd shit, here's your book, nerd. And I was like, ah, that's not really what I was looking for here. I was just kind of curious about those things. Oh, good girl. What a smart. Oh, so cute. The cool thing with this cat is, you see, there is a kitty. Look over here. There's a little, okay, whatever. There's a little black upside down triangle right here on her lip, like a soul patch. It's like just in the front of her chin. And this, what's interesting, is that she's grown, but it hasn't. So that like, when she was a little baby, it was like. Boom, goth makeup, hardcore lipstick. And that's like her distinctive thing is that little black thing on her chin. But now it's like a little more subtle. It was like a huge characteristic of what she looked like when she was younger. Great. When I first had her for the first year, the way I played with this cat is that I'd wrap both legs of a pair of denim jeans around my whole arm 
to protect myself as much as possible and then lie in the ground and she would just attack me savagely. And my hands were just like constant abrasions and cuts. And I was like, this is bad. I'm going to get like scar tissue all over my hands. I look like a mental patient, honestly. And so by the time she was like one-ish or something, not only did I want to stop doing it, but she was also like getting savage with it. She was like making weird noises and shit. Um, so we stopped that. And I'm glad that we did. That's everything. Okay, Magic Man is in business. Turnips are still here. So I should probably harvest those turnips again. I'm good for now. All right, so that's enough. I'm gonna go eat, and then tonight I'm gonna play. I gotta. I didn't play until I didn't start this game until four o'clock today or something like that because I was feeling a little under the weather. So a camera off nighttime session tonight. I'm so excited. I'm gonna bring that staff of embers into there, and I'm gonna mess shit up. It's gonna be amazing. It's gonna be great. All right. I'm out of here. Hope you all enjoy your evening, whatever you do. Much love from me.